Do you struggle creating financial freedom? You just want it so bad and it just seems like there's roadblock after roadblock after roadblock for you? Did you know that there's biblical principles, whether you believe or not, that actually help you create wealth and financial freedom? I wanna break some down for you today. My name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design and today's video is three biblical principles that will help you on your path to financial freedom. Before we jump in, I want to say many of you that follow me, you may not be believers in God, but that's who I follow. That's what I believe. And so I declare Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So we'll get that out of the way. And I want to say that if you believe that there's many different principles in the Bible that can actually help you on your path to creating wealth and financial freedom, I picked the three that I feel are the most influential that could help you in kind of a step-by-step -step process, some macro level scriptures that are going to allow you to be able to have success as you move forward in your walk with God or in, in your path to creating financial freedom. So with that, let's jump in. All right, let's jump in to the first scripture. Here's what it says. It is Habakkuk chapter two, verse two through three. It says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So what does that mean? Well, the reason why I picked this first one is it's so important to write your vision out. So many times I hear people, I ask them, well, what's your vision? What's your goal? What's your one year, your five year, your 10 year, your lifelong vision? What is your ultimate vision? And many times people can't answer that. They don't know. And so they don't ever write their vision down. God said in his word, he said, write your vision plain on tablets. Well, guess what? We don't have tablets. Well, I have yellow and white tablets down here. They're a little bit different. But what I will say is you have to write your vision down. If you want to be successful, you have to start with writing that vision down because it also says a man without vision shall perish. We want to have a vision for our life. We want to have a vision for our family. We want to have a vision for our finances. We want to have a vision for our children. We want to have a vision for our business we want to have a vision if you didn't catch it it's important to have a vision and to write it down write it down clearly you can't just jot down and be general this is key right here you have to be specific there's a great pastor that passed away a few years ago his name is pastor Cho he wrote he uh, has the had the largest church in the world and one of the things that he said was when you pray and you speak you want to pray specifically you want to be really specific and detailed about it and so you want to make sure when you write your vision you're really really detailed about it now not to the point where you know if you don't get you know a certain brand or it comes with you know one one less room in that building or whatnot it's like God works, he usually works in bigger ways than what your vision is. I always heard this saying, right? If you wanna make God laugh, tell him your vision, right? Because he has something bigger and greater planned for you, okay? So that's the first part of this. The second part of the scripture is basically saying that you will have this vision at an appointed time. It will take time, right? It's not like we just pray for something, we write a vision and boom, we got it. It's going to take time. And so don't linger. Uh, tari means lingering and so don't linger on this vision you want to make sure that you are staying prayed up on it you are staying circling that vision that you are staying and speaking that vision because it will come to pass you just can't doubt you can't lack the faith in your business in your vision whatever it might be that you have on your path to financial freedom you don't want to doubt you want to have that vision and cling to it because it will happen in its appointed time so don't be discouraged keep leaning in keep pressing in keep doing the things that you need to do in order to create the financial freedom that you're looking for all right the second principle is this it comes from proverbs 12 1 and i'm reading for the niv version it says 
Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. I really believe that this scripture is really important because what I've seen out there from a lot of people who are believers and even from people who don't believe in God is that they don't work. They don't work what God has given them or what they've started to create. And so they think that they can either pray on it all the time or they can think about it all the time or even talk about it all the time. And it's like these fantasies that we have, but it's nonsense, right? It makes no sense whatsoever. It's the, the principle here is you have to work what you're given. Now, some of you might be saying, Joe, I have a nine to five. I can't wait to get out of it. I hate it. I want to have financial freedom. And here's what I will say. Work your job. I can't, can't stand when people put nine to fives down. It's the one that puts food on the table is a roof over your head. That job provides for you the ability to invest or to expand or get educated. So nine to fives are not bad. Hear me. Now, do we want to be in them forever? Probably not, right? We want to start our own business. It's the quickest way to start creating the path of financial freedom. It's not the only path you can invest using your nine to five income. I've talked about it another time, but whatever you do, whatever you put your hand to, whatever, you know, land that you have, you want to work that land. So if it's your nine to five, great. If it's your business, great. If it's something that you're invest, you're a full-time investor, then work that land. You can't sit and just pray on it, think about it, talk about it. You have to actually put some action in. You actually have to put a lot of action in. I know we know this, but it's amazing and it would shock you how many people actually don't put their hand to the plow. They aren't diligent in what they're working. They're not doing it with the spirit of excellence. And I just had a coaching call the other day with a high paying client, one of my VIP clients, and we were talking about working in the spirit of excellence because so many times we work kind of, I'll say half ass around things and we don't actually do it from a spirit of excellence. And it doesn't matter because people will see that excellence on you. They'll want to be around you. They'll want to partner with you. They'll say something's different about this guy or this girl, right? There's something different about them and they're going to want to work with you, partner with you, whatever it might be, promote you. So you have to work. Most people, when we think about law of attraction, they're just like, oh, let's just think good thoughts and everything will be hunky dory. And the truth is, especially if you've seen the movie The Secret, the truth is you actually have to do work. Most people leave this part out of the equation and it is a huge part. And the Bible talks about putting your hand to the plow and being diligent and with the spirit of excellence in so many different scriptures. This is one of many I wanted to share with you today. Basic principle, you have to put the work into whatever you have your hand to. So make sure that you're putting your hand to your work and you're doing it with the spirit of excellence. All right, the third principle is a little bit long. It comes from Matthew 25, verse 14 through 30. I'll read it quickly. But this builds upon creating your vision, putting your hand to the plow of that vision or whatever it is that you're working. And then what do you do after that to create financial freedom? Matthew 25 talks about it. So let's read it here and we'll put it on the screen. This is the parable of the talents. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who has called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to the one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on his journey. Then. He who had received the five talents went and traded with them, and he made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug it in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of the servants came and settled the accounts with them. So here's what he goes on to say. He who had received five talents came and brought five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He who also had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I've gained two more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant, for you have been faithful over few things. I will make you ruler over many things and turn to the joy of the Lord. Check this out. He who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. 
And I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money to the bankers and at the coming I would have received my own with interest. So take the talent from him, give it to him who has 10 talents. What I love about this scripture is basically what it's saying is these men were given these talents and what did they go do with it? They, the two of them, they went and multiplied their talents, right? The one with, that was given one just kind of hit on, buried it, saved it, so they wouldn't lose it. And so what this principle is about is once you start creating money, once you start creating opportunities, you are now required to go out and invest that, to go out and multiply what you have. If you don't multiply and invest into the future, you won't have more. If you're the one like the guy with the one talent, what's going to happen is you're just going to hoard it. You're going to hold on to it. And I always heard this in network marketing. No one's ever saved their way to wealth. Okay, no one's ever saved their way to wealth. The way you become wealthy, the way that you see a lot of these people creating, you know, millions of dollars and ten billions of dollars is through investing. You have to invest in assets, into businesses, in the people. You want to make sure you go out and multiply. It's like if you're allowing money to control you and you're living in fear, you're gonna hold on to it. When in reality, we're not called to hold on to money. We're called to go out there and multiply, to take what God's given us and use those talents that we have to multiply our money. And that might mean that you need to get educated. You might need to hire a mentor, a coach, go to seminars, read books, and go out and learn how to multiply your money. That might be part of what you need to do, but you're certainly not called to hold on to it. If you want to take this third principle, you have to go and multiply your money. And if you're like, Joe, I don't know where to do that. I don't know how to do that. Reach out. We can help. There's always opportunities here at Master Life by Design. We always have coaches available to help coach you through some of the limitations that you might have. Maybe you don't even know where to start. And so you need to start with Habakkuk 2 too, right? Write your vision plain on tablets. And so you might need help unfolding that, pulling that out of you. A coach can help you do that. So reach out if you need that help. All right, lastly, I want to give you a bonus scripture, a principle in the Bible that really sticks out to me that I live faithfully. I haven't always done this, but I have over this last decade plus been faithful and diligent in this. And I don't say that to brag about me. I say this because I want you to know that there's people out there doing this and seeing great benefits. And it's not that God's an ATM or anything like that. It's, and I'll break this down here at the end, but it's about your heart. And so let me give it to you. It's Malachi 3.10. So it says, bring your whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room enough to store it. And what I love about this is what God's saying here is first off, the first 10% in your wealth of whatever you create in your life is God's. Like if I was meditating on this the other day and I was like, well, everything I receive really comes from God. It says, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, right? And so you might say, well, there's people who don't believe in God that are super wealthy. And if we were getting into a spiritual debate, I might say something like, you know, well, the devil can bless people to have money for the wickedness and to worship money. And so that's not what God wants for you. God wants you to worship him and look to him and lean on him. But that's a whole different story. But here's what I will say. The first 10% is God. And when I started giving 10% to God, the first 10, the first fruits, the best of what I got, my life radically transformed. I remember when I made, it was a Friday night, I was with my buddy and we were talking about how we weren't tithing, we need to get back into leaning in and putting God first. And so we both made the decision that we would tithe, we would start tithing and I truly meant it in my heart. I committed in my heart, like no matter what, I am tithing 10% or more, but 10% is the tithe is the first 10%, not 9.5%, not 7%, not 11%, the first 10%. And so I made that commitment. The next morning we went for a run on the beach right before we were getting ready to take off. I got a text message saying, hey, look at your bank account. And there was $3,000 in there. Now, I didn't do the physical act, but God knew my heart. And man, I got blessed. Will that happen for you? 
I don't know. But here's what I will say. Well, the reason why this scripture is so true, and it's the only place in the Bible it says, test me in this. It's the only place that you want to test God. He says, test me in the finances, giving the first 10%. But the reason why you want to do this is not because you want to give God some so he could turn around and give you more. Although I do God believe God's a loving, abundant God. Everything is his. There's no limitation. Uh, he's greater than the Federal Reserve. He could, It's not like the Federal Reserve just keeps printing money. It's like every Everything is God's. Everything is his. Um, so what he wants is your heart. That's what he's after. He wants to see you give. And it's a biblical principle that when you give, you receive, right? When you sow, you shall receive. Maybe not right away, but in due season, you will reap your harvest. And so this is one thing that's totally shifted in my life that I've always given. And when I give, and I give my tithe, but then there's offerings, or what we call giving, and that's above the 10%. And that's where God wants to see your heart. He's after your heart to lean on Him, to worship Him, not money. I used to worship money, and I did not get blessed the way I wanted to be blessed. And so I know that if you apply this, where you start giving, even if you don't believe, you'll start to see the rewards come back to you because these are biblical principles that whether you believe it or not actually take place. And a lot in the secular world and for a lot of non-believers, they actually apply these things and they do get wealth. Why? Because they're biblical principles. But if you understand that your source comes from God and not from you, all of a sudden the game changes. When you work like it depends on you and you walk in faith and pray like it depends on God, man, that recipe, it's like having the ultimate lineup in sports. You can't lose. And so I encourage you to lean in on this. All right, so there you have it. Those are the three principles plus a bonus for you. Now look, I know for many of you watching, you might not believe. For those of you that are watching and do believe, you know these principles are true. And there's many others. I say the ultimate personal development book, the ultimate book of success in life, just not just finances or business in life, is the Bible. I mean, like that's where the source of all this really comes from. So anyway, with that, if you found value in this, give it a thumbs up, comment below. I know some of you might not agree and that's totally cool. I'm totally okay with that, but this is what I believe and this is what I've seen happen in my life, my client's life and so many others. If you would just write your vision down, if you would work on it like it depended only on you and if you would actually go out there and multiply your money, you would see your path to financial freedom accelerate rapidly. Doesn't mean there won't be challenges, but it does mean that it will come to pass if you stay faithful, if you stay working at it and you keep pushing and ultimately praying on it, you will see breakthrough. It will come to pass. So let me know what you thought in the comments below. Also, make sure you subscribe, click that notification button so you know when videos like this come out because there's more. We're gonna be doing more interviews with people who created financial freedom or are on their path to financial freedom and break down how they actually do that so you actually have more details around these areas, especially in real estate because that's the best asset class I feel for long-term wealth creation. There's many more, but that's the big one. So with that, my name's Joe Moffitt with Master Life by Design. Have a great one. See you guys.